Yep. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's nice to see you here today on this usual cloudy, rainy Iowa day. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Ann Bartelt. I'm currently serving as uh, the council vice president, and I get to be with you this morning to make these announcements on this Mother's Day. My mother, Lois, along with dad, raised six of us, three boys and three girls, on a farm in Woodbury County. Mom was a city girl, so there was a lot of love that led her to the country. She died almost 20 years ago now, and I feel her presence with me every day. This morning on the Christian radio station that comes on WHO on Sunday mornings, the gentleman said, God knows us better than we know ourselves. And I think mothers are probably a pretty close second to that. So God bless our mothers. We welcome this morning Pastor Rachel Mithelman to our service and pulpit. She um, comes to us from St. John's Lutheran in downtown Des Moines. And we know that retirement really doesn't mean you don't go to work occasionally. Um, Pastor Yuan is away until May 18th on family leave with his foster children. So we have let you know through our announcements and from last Sunday's service that our synod will be sending a listening team to be with us here tomorrow between 4 o'clock and 9 o'clock p.m. The goal of our participation in this listening process is to assess what is going well and what we can celebrate at our church as well as what concerns we may have regarding the effective functioning of our congregation. There are copies of the letter from the bishop on the usher's table that you are encouraged to pick up if you have not yet seen it. Each of us will have 15 minutes to talk individually, privately, and confidentially with a member of the listening team. They are all on the synod staff. You may use Sign Up Genius, or you can use the paper sign-up sheet that is back on the usher's table. And then I'll move your sign-up on that to the online platform later today. Everyone is welcome and encouraged to participate in this process. Just a, a couple of other quick reminders. On the website and either on the home page or at the bottom of the home page, as part of the announcements, you can sign up to serve at worship. Sign up our children for VBS. Grandchildren are most welcome. Sign up for the transportation ministry and then complete the member information form. There are also paper copies of that form back on the usher's table as we try to update our servant keeper. Sunday, May 22nd, during worship, we will honor our confirmands and our high school graduates. Mark your calendars for that special service. And then our trust fund is focused on missions outside the normal functioning of our church. The committee has pledged $5,000 to the all-inclusive playground project for the Winterset City Park. Chair of that committee is coffee maker and fellowship host Dick Anderson, who is celebrating his birthday today. Let us sing. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Dick, happy birthday to you. What a wonderful celebration. And our worship service time of prayer today, we invite you to participate in our community prayers for the three sections, prayers for the world, prayers for God's ministry, and prayers for our loved ones. Your bulletin may have something handwritten in it to be spoken in community. All of us are encouraged and welcome to speak our prayers aloud, including prayers of celebration or concerns to be brought to God. Are there any other announcements I may have missed this morning? And then uh, Pastor Rachel has a few words. Oh, I have more than a few words, but I'll keep it to a few. Um, it's good to be with you this morning. I had forgotten how gorgeous it is to drive once you get off the freeway and come south on 169. It just took my breath away this morning, this 
incredible green of spring is such a different green. And it just, I'm so grateful to be here and um, to have had that experience as well as to be with you. I'm retired ELCA pastor, retired in the middle of the pandemic after 16 years serving as the senior pastor at St. John's in downtown Des Moines. Prior to that, I had parishes in Wisconsin and Minnesota, and one year in Northern California, which my husband and I referred to as the year we went to heaven, and then we came back, um, because we were in wine country. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm grateful today, as I was saying my driving prayers, um, remembering, um, being grateful for um, having two lovely kids. They're both adults now, our son. Christian lives with his family in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and our daughter Constance um, is, as she says, in the family business. Uh, she is a director of children and youth ministry in Encinitas, California, north of San Diego. And uh, so my husband's also ordained pastor and has served in the Des Moines area, and he is also retired as well. So, a little bit about me. Um, I'll start with um, the apology. I'm bound to make mistakes here this morning. Um, I usually mess up the sit and stand stuff. So, if you, I trust you know when to sit and stand. So, you do it, okay? And if I'm sitting and you're standing, I'll stand up. But just take the initiative and don't wait for me to do this or this, you know, type of thing. Um, and then let's talk just a bit about the day. It's the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter. The Easter is a week long. It's seven Sundays. So it's, a, a, it's an octave of, of praise and thanks to God. On the fourth Sunday, the gospel reading every three years is, every, of, every one of the three years is from the 10th chapter of the gospel of John. And it has something to do with the image of Christ as shepherd. So this Sunday has the informal name of Good Shepherd Sunday. And you'll hear that. There's a, a line in the gospel reading where Jesus says, My sheep know my voice. Uh, the first two readings, though, are the text for preaching. The first is um, a story from the book of Acts. All through the Easter season, we read from the book of Acts, which I kind of refer to as the wild, wild west of the church, because it's what came next after the resurrection of Christ and the commissioning of the disciples. And today, this gorgeous short story about a woman disciple. She's actually called a disciple in scripture. Her name is Tabitha or, or Dorcas. So that's the first reading. And then the second reading is from Revelation chapter 7. It's one of those interludes in the wildness of the book of Revelation where we get a glimpse into the throne room of heaven and we hear the saints singing. It's a, just a tremendous text. And what they're doing is singing Easter to us, in essence. Um, it says, these are the ones who have come out of the great ordeal. Well, we've all known ordeals. But still we have that hope in Christ and still we sing. So just immerse yourself in the word. It's nice to know you have it printed in front of you so you can look for um, themes and and things that um, strike you as we worship together. All right, I'll stop talking. Let's sing. I assume you stand for this. <laughs> Still tied forever, flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful. 
fall a river Gather with the saints at the river That flows by the throne of God On the margin of the river Washing up its silver spray we will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather by the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. the shining river, lay we every burden down, grace our spirits will deliver, and be bright our robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river. Soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, who blessed and was free to be people of God. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and better blessing, glory are His. This is the feast of victory. Blessing, power, glory, and his be the God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Bless Pat Nelson in the reading of Scripture. Make us hunger for the word of life, who is Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first reading comes to us from um, Acts chapter 9. Now in Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was a devoted to good works and acts of charity. 
At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when they arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics than other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. And then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and the widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known as, throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The second reading comes to us from Revelation chapter 9, or chapter 7, excuse me. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, crying, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. And then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within the temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not stripe them and no scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends today's lessons.
I invite you to rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you into prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of this day, for time we have not had before and will never have again. All gift, all grace from you. And we thank you for your word that challenges us and provokes us and comforts us, and how you do indeed shepherd us through this life and into the life to come. Be near now, we pray, in hearts and minds, and increase our faith. We ask in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. My sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, the Christ. Amen. It is a memory that I hold close to my heart because it reminds me that we live always in the season of Easter. Her name was Esther Hansen, ever elegant even as the years and various health crises took their toll on her strength and her mobility. Though born and raised in west central Wisconsin, she spoke with a Norwegian brogue and maintained a certain formality in relationships that I recognized from growing up in a Scandinavian community myself. Over the years, I visited Esther regularly in the care facility where she lived, and I grieved her quiet decline as she entered her ninth decade. The greatest loss that age imposed upon Esther was the loss of her hearing. It isolated her and it also proved so challenging to her caregivers. Yet, as death drew near, Esther's hearing was restored in a most unusual way. You see, as death drew near, Esther still could not hear the voices of her family or her caregivers. 
But Esther began to cl clearly hear the saints as described in the vision that is in our second reading for today. That host of witnesses, John writes, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, singing, singing, amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. You see, though deaf still to our voices, Esther began to hear them singing. She repeatedly asked her caregivers in her last days, who is singing? Mystified, they assured her as they moved in and out and around her quiet room that no one was singing. But Esther insisted, I hear singing. Who is singing? I have no doubt that in that thin place between life and death, Esther heard the Easter hymn of these saints. Those who have come out of the great ordeal, as the text says, and sing now around the throne of God, the great shepherd of us all. In fact, Esther's testimony reminds us that we live now and always in the season of Easter. That is, we live in a world where now the powers of hatred and division of destruction and death no longer have the last word. Even though all evidence may seem to point to the contrary. Rather, because Christ has been raised from death to life, he continues to be at work in our lives, in our communities, and in our world. Thus, every day is Easter. Every day, if we only listen to it, we hear the Easter song of the saints. Now, in this particular year of the three-year lectionary, so creatively called Year C. They could have come up with better names. The second readings for the seven Sundays of the Easter season all come from the book of the Revelation to John. That mysterious final book of the Bible written not to terrorize, as some claim, but to give hope to those who were clinging to faith in the risen Christ, while living on the very margins of society, some of them even martyred because of their faith by the Roman Empire. Yes, there are scenes of fierce conflict between good and evil in this book, but such scenes are interrupted again and again by these glimpses of worship and praise of God for the resurrection of Jesus from death to life, the sure and certain defeat of any power that would seek to snatch God's children from God's hand. Though life does indeed hold great ordeals, none of us would argue that. Though the struggle to keep the faith is fierce, the writer proclaims for those who would follow Jesus in the first century as well as in the 21st century. Though the ordeal is great, the outcome is not in question. The life-restoring love of God shown to us in Christ has prevailed and is at work among us 
still. So week after week this year, these readings from the Revelation proclaim this brilliant lang- in this brilliant language the hope that is ours in Christ. They keep singing Easter to us week after week, even as we live in a time of rancor and division, of war and famine, of lies and the consistent dehumanization of the other. Christ is risen, the singing proclaims. Christ is risen, so every day is Easter. And have we ever needed the assurance of God's continued power to bring life out of death? Have we ever needed it more than we need it today? It was the singing that that community in Joppa heard when their beloved Tabitha, or Dorcas, became sick and died. It's amazing. She's a woman in scripture who actually gets a name and is called a disciple. Tabitha lived her life walking the walk of faith. She provided for widows, utterly bereft members of the community, in word and in deed. And when she died, her community, trusting that song of hope and new life sent for Peter, the flawed and faithful leader of the early church, they asked him to come to them without delay, and he did. He went to the room where Tabitha's body was, just an ordinary room in an ordinary house. He prayed. And then so that we would not misunderstand what was happening, the writer says, Peter said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up and he gave her his hand and helped her up. Do not misunderstand, the writer seems to be saying, Christ is present in this world to give new life, even in the midst of suffering and death. I love this story. I think because it's so homely. That is, it speaks to us and to every ordinary community of faith seeking to remain faithful amid challenge and sorrow and loss. What we need, the story proclaims, is provided because Christ is risen every day now is Easter. The singing continues, you might say. For the love that raised Jesus also raises us. And if we keep listening to the singing, placing our trust in Christ, just as in Joppa, many may also come to believe in the Lord. As you may know, Lutheran Services in Iowa, LSI, is working diligently diligently these days, even around the clock, to resettle Afghan refugees in Iowa, including in Des Moines. And because the number of refugees, immigrants, and asylum seekers was dramatically reduced, during the previous administrations, agencies such as LSI had to reduce staff and programming, but now they've been suddenly called upon to resettle Afghans and soon Ukrainians with not near enough time to ramp up the way they want to, to ramp up back to capacity. So volunteers 
are needed to provide everything from transportation to household goods to time to set up apartments and more. My husband and I did the paperwork required to volunteer, and so we received the emails that outline LSI's needs. And a unique request was sent out last Monday. An Afghan family in Des Moines with eight school-aged children for whom permanent housing has not yet been found had to suddenly relocate from one temporary housing situation to another, which resulted in moving the children out of the school district where they were enrolled. The LSI staff desperately wanted to keep those children in the school where they were through the end of the year, but they'd lost their transportation. So volunteers were needed, the email said, to come to the office, get the LSI van, pick the children up starting at 7.30 in the morning, take them to drop them off at four different schools, then at the end of the afternoon, pick them up from four different schools and take them back to their temporary home. And for the sake of providing some stability for those kids, they wanted people to commit to a full week of both morning and afternoon transportation. I didn't respond right away, but that request just kept working on me. So I emailed the staff person a few days later to see how many more volunteers were needed. And this is what I got in reply. Hey, Rachel. <laughs> we found one man who offered to take every single shift. What a blessing. And I sat there with tears in my eyes. And I thought to myself, whoever that man is, he's heard the singing. He heard those saints who have faced every hardship under the sun and know that God is still faithful, bringing life out of death, singing. And so like Tabitha, he got up, he sat up, and he stood up. And he walked into the suffering of the world, a testimony to the love that lives and will never let us go. You see, my friends, every day is Easter. We are accompanied every day by that song of the saints assuring us that death's power in all of its forms has been defeated, and every day the church, like Tabitha, is called to get up, to sit up, and to stand up in the power of the risen Christ to make known that indeed salvation belongs to our God. And God is at work here and now. Alleluia. Amen. Through the wilderness
Abel, I invite you to stand, and together with the whole church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the world, the church, and all in need. You can be seated. We pray, O oh God, for all the communities and nations of the world, their civic leaders and citizens, especially President Biden, Governor Reynolds, and those who serve the public good here in Winterset, the mayor, city administrator, and city council. Let peace and justice flourish throughout your world. God of mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> we pray for the ministry of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek God's wisdom, for Elizabeth, our presiding bishop, and Amy, our bishop, and for this congregation's ministers, both staff and volunteers. Let blessings and mercy of God flow from here like an ever-living stream. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in danger, who endure sorrow or any kind of trouble, for those who are sick, lonely, and in need, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those we love. Bind us to one another for the comforting of sorrows and the celebration of each other's joys. from mothers. Let the love and compassion that this world needs start with us, God of mercy. Hear our prayer. In your compassion, O oh God, hear our prayers spoken aloud or in the silence of our hearts. For into your gracious hands we entrust all for whom we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us make an offering to God for the ministry of the church. <clears throat>
in your ways and step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days and step by step you lead me and I will follow you all of my days I invite you to rise and we pray, blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth, as you have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood that is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to share in this meal. At his table we are accepted as we are. In Holy Communion, we are reconciled to God and neighbor, and all are always welcome. Thanks be to God. This 
This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. Without you This is the air I breathe This is the air I breathe This is the air Oh
I live in the age of lavalier mics, and these ear things just don't work on my ear. Anyway, we rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray now that you would strengthen us through this gift. Strengthen us in our faith toward you and in our love toward one another. For the sake of Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. It's wonderful to be together this morning.
I was even thinking.